All right, welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Continuing on with our 6.5 Grendel uh, load development. And we just had finished, in the last video, shooting Varmint with the 130 grain ELD match. And we started to get some better results. The best results we've seen out of the rifle so far. And that was after uh, lapping the receiver, bedding the barrel in the receiver, and then readjusting, maybe perhaps fouling and some of these issues. And then we started to tighten up and do pretty good. So I want to shoot this a little bit more and investigate here. So we're going to shoot four additional loads in this area. So we're going to start with a 27.7. We're going to move up just below this because this started to open. Yeah, could it be me? I don't know. It was 1.2 roughly and 1.3 here. But the uh, extreme spread and standard deviation also opened up here a little bit as well. So I just want to kind of back off of this and see about a 0.2 difference and we'll see how it looks. So I'll put this low data up here in the upper corner for you to see. But um, 27.7, we're going to go 27.9. 28.2 and 28.5 and we'll stop there and see how we do and watch our pressure 28.5 is the sierra load data for for varmint which is the only varmint i found from published data other than uh, individuals on the different sites um, so 28 and a half is their max. We're gonna come up to that point and we'll stop there and see how we look. There was still some more case capacity at 28 for sure. So I think 28 and a half will just be a very full case, not compressed uh, from what I see, but we'll double check that. So that's the plan for this. Now I thought I'd show you something else though going on um, with my brass. And so it, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but there's a dent on every one of them right in the shoulder. And I was trying to find out what this is thinking, oh no, I got something in the chamber. Uh, I cleaned it out, couldn't see anything. Trying to trace this issue down. And in fact, it's inside my Hornady die. Now this is a Hornady, of course, factory die, one of their custom grade dies that you buy here. And it's been that way from the beginning. I just didn't catch it. Um, thinking maybe I had too much lube, you know, you can get a little dent in there, but then I finally found out it's repeating exactly the same place uh, as you load or as you size the brass. So you can't see down in here, but there's a standing piece of steel, a little ball of steel down in the uh, resizing die. Now, you have to excuse my little crude drawing here, but I thought I'd show you on the back of this old target what this really looks like. And so uh, as you bring your brass up, of course, you're going to hit the shoulder and the neck and everything's going to get resized. Well, right there is a round bump standing on the surface. I don't know how you can do that. Uh, because normally you come in here and you machine this and your cutter comes in and they come in and ream it. And I don't know, maybe they final grind it uh, to get it really, really tight. But what's that there for? The way the cutting operations happen, I don't know how that could be unless cutter got too hot, you had material on the end of it and it welded it to the surface of it. I don't know, but I could not. I got some picks in there and different things trying to push and break that loose and I could not break it loose. And so um, I got another one. Uh, Optics Planet had it to where you could buy just the resizing die itself. And so I've got that and we'll do that. And maybe I'll send the other one back to home today and see what they have to say about that. I mean, everybody can have these shoots, so it's not a huge deal. I'm able to still load and shoot, but I don't want to dent every time I resize. So we'll, uh, we'll get past that. All right, so for today's video, what I want to do is go back and like I said, shoot these 130 grain ELDs. Well, then we're going to shoot 123s. I finally are getting to where we're going to shoot the, uh, the, the common load that a lot of you can buy factory ammo for and things like that. Uh, so we're going to shoot the Hornady ALD Match 123s. And we're going to do again Varmint, Power Pro Varmint in this. And we're going to go from 27 uh, grains up to um, 29 grains. Now, the interesting thing is, and, and I don't have Hornady load data for this, I have to reference again Sierra load data, um, is that uh, there's a huge powder range uh, when it comes to varmint. I mean, a really huge powder range. I was surprised how big it is. I you know, normally try to do 0 0.2, 0 0.3 increments so I can kind of hone in faster and I'll have to reshoot a lot of things to find out exactly the sweet spot. Well, not with this powder and this bullet combination. They have a really really broad window that it can shoot. And so we're going to start near the top end, but not the max. So Sierra says 29.2. We're going to go to 29 and go down in 0.5 grain increments. Again, I'll put that up there for you. Um, so we're going to do 29, 28 and a half, 28, 27 and a half, 27. And then we'll see how we fall out. 
So, really excited to shoot these because I shot the factory uh, Hornaday Black ammo, which was this bullet um, to begin with, and that was when the gun was brand new, you know, and it wasn't fouled, it wasn't anything, and I got not good results, terrible results at 50 yards. So we're going to see if we can do better with our hand loads and um, with a barrel maybe that's slightly fouled and should be a lot better result, I hope, and in power pro vermin. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, what else are we going to shoot in upcoming videos? Well, we have 129 grain interlocks. Now, I want to shoot these because I intend to take this gun boar hunting as soon as this COVID-19 mess is over with, um, head down to either Tennessee or, or Texas and go on a boar hunt. And so this might be a good candidate then for a hunting round uh, with a soft point and then uh, interlock design. It's made to expand and so we can, we can check one, get reasonable accuracy with it. I don't expect it to be pinpoint like a target round, but if we can get down to one, one and a half in the way, that'll be perfect, uh, I think, for that. And then, um, We'll check it and see if we can do some expansion tests too. So I look forward to shooting that. Well, then I got the magic bullet. Now this is Johnny from Johnny's Reloading Bench magic bullet. And I forget whose wife, Blake's wife maybe? Somebody, somebody's wife sent him this bullet. It's just a hilarious series of videos. So go over to Johnny's and check that out if you're interested in this bullet for sure. Um, but anyway, 120 grain ELD matches, but he got really good results. So we're going to test this and we're going to see what it does in our much cheaper BCA barrel and uh, see what we get with that. So I look forward to shooting that one. Well then next up, 95 grain VMAXs. Now these are not going to be long range bullets. You know, you can imagine maybe, I don't know, three, 400 yards in and then they'll start to really uh, fall off or get pushed around by the wind. But I really don't care because I really want to shoot these more for target shooting and see what kind of accuracy we can get. So we're going to try the lighter grain bullet and that's probably about as light as I'm going to go in 6.5 Grendel. Uh, so that's, we'll do that to that point. So uh, shoot these today and these in upcoming videos and we'll decide here what powders. I'll probably keep shooting varmint some of these because it did so well at least so far with the 130s. But there's more. So with your um, with the order, I also got then from uh, Mid South some other bullets. Now Mid South has um, Nosler bullets that they sell uh, in bulk. They call them their Match Monster bullets, um, and so I'm going to try these. Now these are also 123 grain uh, bullets. And so I got two packages. They sell these in nice little sample packages. And I, I appreciate them doing that because I don't want to go buy 250 or 500 at a time and not know. And they don't sell boxes of 50 or boxes of 100. They just sell bulk or larger volumes. So 20 at a time. That's pretty good. I really appreciate them doing that because then you can test it out. So I have a couple packs of these. So we'll have up to 40 rounds we can shoot of these and see how they do. And so obviously we're going to compare these straight against the um, 123 ELDs and see how we do. So we'll get in the range of what we think shoots accurately and then we'll shoot these in a similar range um, and try them out. So they, they you know, they look pretty, look pretty nice. You see them there. I mean, um, Pretty smooth, pretty nice meat plats. I mean, they're not sharp. They're kind of the flattened out on the meat plats, so it's not like they've been deformed. And you get some of them that look like you know, look like, like that. Um, so um, not too bad, not too bad. So we'll see, we'll see how they do, and I'll do some weight checks and things like that. So that's the 123. As well, while I was ordering from them, they also have 100 grain bullets, and so we're going to try these. Um, 100 grain bullets and so obviously the BC is not as good etc etc but still let's see how they do and we're going to shoot those now finally for the coup de gras or whatever you can think of here um, again mid-south uh, is doing something I haven't seen from anybody else and maybe somebody else is doing that but if you look at that sexy bullet right there you can see that real well I'll zoom in and put a picture up there this is the 135 grain a tip Hornady bullet. So they're aluminum tipped round for ultra precision. Obviously it won't melt at high velocity and things like that. I look forward to shooting this. Now these little suckers are expensive. Uh, they're, even with them doing a, a you know a nice thing in allowing us to get 10 at a time. Um, yeah they're expensive. Uh, this is a dollar bullet basically. But they are really something else and you can feel like when you feel down the side of a lot of the bullets when they have the plastic tips and things you can kind of just barely feel where those made up yeah not this one 
how they form them this is perfectly smooth all the way down and really nice small consistent tip so they're supposed to be for sort of extreme accuracy and uh, we're gonna see we're gonna find out and I only have 10 so I want to make sure I have a round that's pretty good so since they're 135 grain we may just take our um, varmint data from the last one and shoot down a couple grains and try them out and so, yeah, looking forward to, to shooting all these different bullets here. Um, what you see here, and then the, the Mid-South 123s and 100s are going to be fine. Now, just as one other point on these, for these Amaxes, yeah, good. Fortunately, it didn't hit the tip when it hit the floor. Uh, they, spell, they sell a special seating stem. And so I got ahead and I hated to because it's like I got ten dollars in bullets and I gotta spend another thirteen dollars for a seating stand or whatever it was. I think it was thirteen, fourteen dollars. But again, I don't want to distort them. So I've decided to shoot more. That's what we'll do. Um, I think these are never gonna be hunting bullets, of course. They're gonna be just for precision rounds, but we'll check them out. Anyway, we're gonna do that. Uh, already primed the brass. This is twice fired Hornaday. That's been resized, trimmed, and, and chamfered and deburred, so it's all set to go. And uh, we'll start getting then into our powder charges. All right, now we're gonna start our load development. So we've loaded our powder into our RCBS Charge Master Light. We have calibrated all of our scales. And today I'm gonna use the Brightfit again and the new Calox scale uh, that they've done, one of the three that relatively cheap uh, scales on Amazon I found that, that do, did a really good job. Now this one is a 0.1 grain accuracy and this is 0.02 so we'll kind of do a comparison but um, so far they have weighed together and zeroed together uh, really well. So we'll start off with 27.7 grains And uh, it's just first time charging the powder to this, so the RCBS will tend to sort of hunt a little bit on these first ones. So we'll see how close it gets, and then we'll uh, top these off. So 27.7, normally I go a little bit below and, and um, trickle up on these, but it has been so accurate with this powder before, I'm just going to try hitting the direct um, value here. Put our correct units on. Get back out of calibration here, or out of grain or grams for calibration. All right, so 27.54. So we'll trickle up to 27. All right, 27.70. Do our double check here. 27.7. So we're good. And we'll do our first charge. So we're going to continue on. These are the 27.7 grain loads that we've done in a previous target that did good. We'll work our way up to 28.5 in the varmint. And then we'll um, switch over then for the powder charges for our 123 grain ELDs. All right, we're moving through our charges now for the 123 grain ELDs. Now these are higher charge weights than we've done before. So uh, in the previous ones, we'd stopped at um, 28 grains. And these are, we're weighing now 28 and a half. And just double checking here. And we have 28 and a half, we have 28 and a half, everything's still a green. And we're gonna go all the way up to 29 now on the 123 grain ELD. So that case will start to fill up, but of course the bullet is shorter. And so uh, I don't think we'll still compress, but we'll be much fuller than we were with the 130 grain ELDs. So we'll finish these things off and then seat our bullets. All right, in preparation for seating our bullets, I went back and weight sorted the bullets we used in the last video, and that's these uh, 6.5 millimeter, 130 grain ELD matches. Now, there were some really odd shots in those, and I, you know, I blame some of them on the scuffs. But you know, since I didn't correlate bullet to bullet on the target, I don't know. But certainly, scuffs on the bullet aren't good. Um, but look at the weight differences I'm seeing. I've already I've weighed the last 55 bullets that I have in this box, and it goes to one. 29 point 8 129 point 9 130 130.1 130.2 130.3 and 134.4 that's a pretty big range but, you know for general shooting I don't know maybe it's okay but you know it expect a lot better from a bullet that calls itself a match bullet um, you expect some spread but these are just the point one ranges 
um, some of my C are match bullets. I'm, I'm talking 0.02 kind of separations and 0.04s kind of things. Um, this, uh, this box or this lot maybe, yeah, not so much. Not impressed. So we're going to shoot just 20 of these today and we'll separate out then the really light bullets and the really heavy bullets and try to concentrate our rounds just in this area. So I thought you might like see that. Uh, it's always good to check. I didn't check and all of a sudden I see really screwed up results. And uh, so I think this is probably a good indicator of where some of that was coming from anyway. So we'll separate these out and then we'll seed them. All right, we're going to start seeding now our 130 grain ELD matches that we separated out by weight. And so the set to the same point it was last time, we'll check, of course, and it's supposed to be 2.260 in overall length. So let's see how we do. And if you see, just as a double check about that scuff issue, there's nothing coming out of the seeding die on that scuff. And it couldn't have done it that way as it did before anyway, um, because of the way it works. So 2.258 and a half. So we'll check another couple. Two point two five nine. Two point two five seven and a half. Two point two five nine and a half. So we're right on our number. So we'll finish seeding these hundred and thirty grain uh, bullets, and then we'll move into the one twenty threes. All right, now we're going to start seeding our 123 uh, ELDs. And so we'll start with our lowest charge, and then we'll check the highest charge to make sure the seeding depth isn't changing. On the 130 grain, when we got to the Sierra Max of 28.5, there was still no signs that it was compressing, and the overall length remained uh, consistent. And so um, you cannot hear any case room, uh, even powder moving in the case, um, but, but nonetheless, it's, it's a very full case, but not yet, I believe, compressed. So uh, there might be still some room to go there, but we're going to check pressure signs at that Sierra Max. So uh, I back this out a little bit, and then we'll try the 123s. Now I still have the ELD seating stem in here that Hornady makes for these. So let's see how we do. The overall length is supposed to still be the same at 2.260. So let's see how we do. Ho, ho, ho. Way, way short. So that shows that this ogive and all is considerably different. So I'll have to tap this one out um, a bit more. And that's, uh, you know, I guess I should have backed that even more. So we'll back this out a good bit more here. And then we'll uh, sneak up on the next one. So, one, two, again, 2.260 is what we're after. Let's see how we do this time. 2.292, so yeah, we definitely made it. So we can come down 32,000. So that's um, 10, 20, 30, and two. And I'll see exactly how we do. Two point two six two and a half. So I'm close. Come down maybe a couple more thousands and see if we can get it to five nine or just right at two six zero. It's where we want to be. Okay, two point two six zero and a half. So let's see a couple more and see how we do on the average of these bullets since we obviously know they vary in overall length and weight, as we found out a lot. 2.258 and a half. 2.260. We'll say one more here of the lowest powder charge. 27 grains. Two 
2.258. So that's not bad. Within a couple thousands, one and a half on average or so. So let's go to our maximum charge and see how our seats and see if we are compressing at all and changing our overall length. Can't feel it at all when I seat it. Felt smooth, no crunchiness. 2.259. Check the next one. Two point two five nine and a half. So by the looks of this, I think there's no way we're compressing anyway because this is twenty nine grains. This is pretty full, but this is a fired case too now, and that powder is right at just barely above the shoulder, and so it's a shorter bullet. We're not seating, you know, down into it as far to get overall length. And uh, so we are certainly not compressing this powder. And there'll still be more room in this case. And that's uh, 2.257. Let's check one more and see uh, if we need to bump it up just a little. Yeah, 2.257. So uh, not bad. We'll... we'll uh, make it come up just about a thousandth or so and then we'll continue seating the rest of these and uh, then we'll see you at the range.
All right, back in from the range, I thought I'd show you the brass. And so if you can see this brass well enough, um, really is nothing at all to speak of. Now, when we got up to the 29 grain of varmint with 123 grain uh, ELDs, all these are the 123s and these are the 130s. Um, just a very, very slight occasional mark uh, smear of the ejector. This one has one, you know, a little bit more than, than most here, but there's definitely a smear on those. And so 29 grains is probably about as high as we should go. The 130s here, um, max there was uh, 28 and a half grains. And uh, they're pretty good, very, very light indications of a smear. But the primers and all these are all still good and rounded and uh, not flattened at all. So um, all these are probably okay, but I just wouldn't want to shoot often, probably at these top ranges. So the brass is good. Problem is, the targets are not. Um, I've shown some of these, and I'll show the data for them in the upper part of the screen. But this is the one we shot on the first round of testing. Now, I've actually done two rounds of testing now with the same exact loads. Now the second time through, um, I literally loaded the same thing as the first target. Well this is the first target. Let me uh, re-zoom out for that. Here's the targets then from our shooting in this round. Now remember we've done this load twice. The uh, 130 grain, four different levels. The 123 grain, four diff five different levels in um, Power Pro Varmint. And um, just really disappointing. We're getting down, you know, I started at the 140s, now we're at the 123s, we're at pretty good velocities, really good standard deviations overall. Uh, so far the low is a 1.9 standard deviation at 5 extreme spread for 5 shots, and so that's been pretty good, but uh, even these, you know, they're, they're good, um, but they're not matching my level expectation. If, if you expect to get an AR and shoot, you know, 2.5 inch groups, well, then this may be for you. Yeah, it's not for me. Uh, and I'll show you why in just a minute. But anyway, so you see the, the, the moving as we move through the first four here, and then we move into, uh, well, maybe we thought some hope, and then, you know, there's no hope. It falls apart. Here, yeah, you know, a little better. I'll, I'll show those measurements up there in a minute uh, so you can get the idea of what the, what the targets look like. In fact, maybe I'll just put it at the end. But uh, anyway, you'll see the, the numbers and the uh, standard deviation, extreme spread, and group sizes. But, yeah, it's just disappointing. The ammunition, I've gotten to really good levels. Better than uh, the factory ammunition of the Hornady Black. I mean, more consistent, should be more accurate, and yet even the Hornady Black is just scattering all over the place on this barrel. And that's after the bedding, uh, the... Um, facing or truing of that receiver, honing of the front of the receiver, putting it all back together, uh, and in this case changing out the muzzle brake for a heavy tanker style muzzle brake which is more than twice the weight of this one just to try to change the harmonics. Now when I did that it changed the point of impact. Uh, I'll show you that target here. It definitely changed the point of impact. I had to sort of really uh, make some big changes. Okay, That's these targets down here in the lower right corner. Um, you know, I had to really sort of work my way back into a, a group roughly in here because they were all way shifted out of position by changing that muzzle brake. And so it did change the harmonics without a doubt, but uh, yeah, not really in a, well, not really in a way that I think ends up helping particularly. I mean, you know, the groups again are okay. So we start over here, it's the same thing. Uh, the the uh, varmint and the 130 grain rounds moving our way up and you know, this is probably the best one or so of that group, maybe this one, but just you start to get some hope and then boom, flyer comes out of there. Um, and I just can't seem to get past that. So we get into 123s, well, we start off with some vertical stringing, you start getting some hope and then boom, two up there. Same thing here, well this group isn't looking so bad, but you know, again, when you see these numbers, it should be so much better and it's just not. Again, if this makes you happy, more power to you. Bear Creek, Bear Creek is a uh, inexpensive uh, barrel, and if this if this level of accuracy is is fine for you, you know maybe for 100 yards and in deer hunting, perfectly good, right? But I tend to go boar hunting, and boar hunting out to 200 yards, and on a boar, if you know much about that, you need to be very precise with your shots because if you miss, yeah, they don't go down, and uh, 
Best case is they run away. Worst case is they run at you. And so I want to make sure they have the best type of accuracy. And I'll show you the type of accuracy I really expect when I'm done with this 6.5 Rendell adventure. So on we go. Just you know, not, not good all the way around. And we finish up down here um, with the final rounds. And they're just really uh, not any good. This is the Hornaday Black, by the way. And you see the great big uh, scattered pattern with that. Well, just as a just sort of as a comparison and a teaser, perhaps for the next series, um, I broke out one of my custom five five sixes that I built, and we're gonna we're gonna do a whole series on it on both of these guns. One is uh, chamber has got a Wilson Combat twenty inch super sniper barrel, and it's just been really really good, and you expect it because of Wilson Combat's reputation and quality, um, but it's light and day difference. Well, that one's built um, on a total uh, ground-up sort of custom build. And we'll, we'll show that, and you'll see some of the videos on that. Um, the other is a 18-inch white oak uh, arm SBR barrel, um, and it was put onto a DPMS Panther rifle. Um, and so, you know, DPMS, I think, you know, it's a decent gun. It's not bad, but it's not like a super high-end, uh, typically viewed as anyway. Um, and, you know, it it's came with a 16-inch barrel, and it shot probably about like this, you know. Uh, but when I put that 18-inch white oak armor barrel, holy cow. And so we'll get into those series and the accuracies we're getting with that. But this will just give you a teaser of this. So this was trying out 73-grain ELD match rounds uh, in two different levels here. I believe I just changed overall case length here. Um, and, you know, not bad. Not bad. Uh, certainly way better than anything we achieved here. And this is a brand new bullet. Just tried a similar load to another round. But uh, going back to one that I already knew shot well is right here. Now this is near dark and you'll see that, well the video looks good because the, the video camera lightens things. But I had to match my crosshair on crosshair at 100 yards and this is really fine. Well that's hard enough. And I just didn't want to run out. I didn't have enough time to run out put another sticker on there that I can see you know better. But even by aligning just like that, that's a 0.55 MOA group. And the same round, I've shot as low as 0.43 so far with this gun. At that point, I really get happy because now it's, it's most often, it's me, right? In this kind of a group, it's me. And I'm just trying to work on me, which is what makes me happiest. I want the gun to be not the limiting factor, the ammunition, not the limiting factor. I want it to be me because that's the challenge is how can I get better in what I'm doing? So that's the kind of accuracy that I really expect in our 6.5 Grendel. Uh, and we'll, we'll have to do that. We'll have to look at other brands of barrels. So uh, Wilson Combat is a high candidate on there just because of this kind of a result uh, and their reputation. Faxon, yeah, it's probably on the list too. We'll figure that out. There's a few others that I'll consider before we get there. If you have comments, suggestions, and you can show groups like that, please give me a post because I would like to not waste any more money as I've done here. So here I tried the $97 Bear Creek Arsenal Barrel. Like I say, if within a given accuracy, yeah, one and a half M away, you can do it. You can do it um, pretty regularly, I think, but not any better, not consistently, at least not by my experience. Um, so that's fine, $97, <laughs> and way more in my ammunition testing. Um, but I'm done. I'm really done. I shouldn't have to. They offered, and it's kind of them to offer, hey, if you don't like your accuracy, send it back to us, we'll give you a new one. Shouldn't have to do that. All right? Fundamentally, that shouldn't even be offered on a brand new barrel. To be, I mean, to be honest, I mean, as far as, hey, you might have a problem. If you do, hey, we'll give you a new one. Yeah, you don't see that from White Oak Armament. You don't see that from Wilson Combat because they know their product is high quality. And so yeah, I just tried something I probably shouldn't, and I wasted time and money. But lessons learned, and we move on.